Associate Professor Greg Feely is an Indonesia expert based at the ANU's College of Asia and the Pacific. Uh, Greg, this delay in um, sending the two Australians for executions, is that just a logistical matter or does, is there a glimmer of hope that the executions could be stayed? It's hard to find much cause for any hope at all, I'm very sorry to say. And the explanations, there have been a number of explanations that have come from the Indonesian Attorney General's Department as to why there's been this delay in the, in the execution timetable. But none of them give any indication that the Indonesian government is rethinking the execution process itself. They are largely technical issues, that there are not enough isolation cells available on the prison island where the firing uh, squad will, will um, uh, do their work and also that one of the 12 uh, condemned men uh, may have a psychiatric condition and so he is being checked, medically checked. Uh, but there's no one in a senior position in the Indonesian government who is saying yes we are rethinking uh, either the legal or the moral basis of carrying out this death penalty. So that's why I think it's, it's hard to see any reason why we would expect that Chan and Sukumara might be spared. Is there um, any idea how long this delay may last for? It's very, I don't think it will last for long. I note that uh, different ministries are saying different things, but I think the important ministry here is the Attorney General's Department or Attorney General's Ministry, and they are saying that the executions will still take place within this month. So even if there's a delay, it sounds like it will only be a relatively short one. Uh, but I suppose a lot depends on what happens with the preparation of iso isolation cells in the jail and how the psychiatric test on the Nigerian um, uh, death row inmate goes. Uh, and it's just very hard to predict. It may be more protect protracted than what um, the Indonesian officials are saying. Now, Fairfax is, re is reporting our correspondence in Indonesia that Joko Widodo, when the clemency paperwork came to him, it was a little more than a, a list of names that the accompanying documentation was, was missing in a sense. Does this make it difficult for the new Indonesian president as he appeals for clemency for Indonesians, as we know he's doing, sentenced to death in, in other countries, that they may turn around and say, hey, you don't even do your proper paperwork? Is, so I could imagine in an Australian situation that could cause a political problem. But in Indonesia, is that at all a problem for a new president? It's not a problem. It's a problem in Australia and in other countries that have citizens on death row. But in Indonesia, there is hardly any consideration, apart from some NGOs, human rights groups, and also some academics with a concern for um, uh, the legal issues surrounding this. But in the general media, there is very little comment about the broader issues involved in this execution process. And there are several. One of them is, does executing uh, drug runners, convicted drug runners, have any impact on the distribution of drugs in Indonesia? There is really no evidence that I'm aware of that supports the contention of Jokowi that we have to do this for deterrent purposes. And there's very little debate about this in Indonesia. There's also very little uh, attention being given to whether Jokowi gave due consideration to the individual pleas for clemency of the condemned men. And it looks as if he hasn't. And I think the Fairfax report is actually a very good one and it tends to confirm suspicions that many of us have had that Jokowi made a blanket decision early on in his presidency because he wanted to appear to be very determined on these, on these legal issues. And uh, he hasn't really taken the time to acquaint himself with the details of each case. And so it's an ill-informed uh, rejection of clemency. I should also point out that uh, he, in fact, is embroiled in a number of political controversies and so I think the executions issue is just taking a relatively small amount of his time compared to these other political controversies, which are the things that are commanding the big headlines in the Indonesian media. OK, now, the, the Australian government appears to be doing absolutely everything it, it, it can, and, and Tony Abbott has even brought up 
you know, remember the, the tsunami, remember the aid that Australians lost their lives. And also this statement, we will be making our displeasure known, we'll be letting Indonesia know in absolutely unambiguous terms that we will uh, feel grievously let down. The response back from Indonesia is, you know, we don't like threats. Um, I think we can understand what the Prime Minister is trying to do, but do you suspect it will be counterproductive or is there the comments from Indonesia an indication that these kind of comments are starting to bite? I get no indication that this ramping up of Australian um, statements, um, hardening of Australian statements is having any kind of positive effect at all in Indonesia. I think it should be. Indonesia and particularly President Jokowi should be much more concerned about the reputational damage that Indonesia is incurring on this issue. But he is the least internationally aware president in Indonesia's history, I think. And so far he has shown very little concern for what other countries think about Indonesia. He's largely domestically focused and that's one of the reasons why tougher remarks from Australian leaders may not only, well I'm fairly sure and certain that they will not change the dynamic in Indonesia but what they may well do is lead to a backlash that hits Australia more broadly uh, and it might mean that Indonesians look twice at accepting Australian aid and that also has implications for our bilateral relationship because that's one of the very positive things that Australia does for Indonesia but it could also be the case that they become much more resentful of Australian politicians because they think we are interfering um, and we are not allowing... We talk a lot about having uh, due process in Indonesia and the rule of law. They think that there has been due process and proper legal um, consideration in this case and it's all been exhausted and the men are now appropriately on death row. So however we might view it, that's very much the mainstream view in Indonesia, that the men have received every consideration the Indonesian justice system can give them and now um, they're awaiting execution. So in recent decades we've seen some major challenges to the relationship between the two countries, East Timor, the recent spying revelations of our intelligence services actually spying on former President uh, um, Bang Bang Yudhiyono. Uh, would it be dangerous to assume that just in, as the uh, relationship has recovered rather quickly after those events, that with this new president and with a, with a very dynamic kind of democracy there in Indonesia, that the relationship may not repair itself so quickly? Yes, I think Jokowi is a much different kind of president from what uh, Cecilia Lambangbang Yudhiyono was. Mm. Yudhiyono really did have a very long-standing concern for international affairs and for Indonesia's image in the, in the world. And so it would worry him greatly if there was widespread criticism of any kind of Indonesian policy, government policy. Jokowi seems much less perturbed by those kinds of things. It's not even clear that he's paying attention to international opinion. He must be vaguely aware of it, but uh, for example, numerous heads of state, and including our own Prime Minister, have written to him and tried to contact him. He's not been um, uh, particularly responsive to any of those entreaties, even to the point of um, contacting uh, his counterparts abroad and explaining to them why Indonesia is doing what it's doing. Um, so he seems quite implacable and I have my doubts that there's that the kind of dynamics that we had with Yudhiyono, which allowed the Australian relationship to be fairly quickly um, returned to normal after the Snowden and the, the vote turn back um, issues, I don't think that will, um, that will hold, that will be the same for Jokowi and we have a much more nationalistic uh, environment in Indonesia and a lot of people are more likely to be getting very upset at Australia if they think that we're becoming pushy or seeking to leverage our aid to interfere in internal Indonesian affairs. Okay, Greg Feely, thanks for your insights. It's a pleasure. <laughs>